Hi everyone, uh, this video will focus on the uh, setting out of purlin bevels uh, on a hip roof. Uh, this particular purlin will be at 90 degrees to the underside of the common rafter uh, rather than the vertical purlin you might have, for instance, if you want to make attic space. Uh, so we'll just go into it here. Um, here is the joint we're talking about. Um, and we're joining on the underside of the hip rafter as illustrated here. Uh, that's the location of the joint, as it were. Um, also, I'm going to uh, show you the angles here that we'll be focusing on. First one that will come into view here will be the lip bevel. Uh, the next one will be the side bevel or side cut. And the uh, last one then will be the edge bevel or edge cut, as it were. So that's what we we'll focus on here as we go forward into this video. So now you know the location of those angles and where the joint is. Uh, we shall start. And uh, The first thing usually you'll need to do is draw a vertical section through a common rafter uh, as will be shown here now with the purl line at 90 degrees underneath. And uh, from that then you'll be um, um, the top three corners of that purl line will be dropping down extension or projection lines down onto the plan line of the hip and the plan line of the hip will be at 45 degrees uh, as will be illustrated here now so um, next you will see those lines projected down as i mentioned earlier and it's the top three line corner line those that point that point and that point you will not see this from above so that will not be that one will not be projected so um, we'll now draw the view of that same pearl line, but it will be the plan view of that same pearl line as it goes halfway under the hip, as is going to be shown here now. So, um, yeah, here you go, and it's shaded in. So that is the plan view. That's the vertical section view of the pearl line. That's the plan view of the pearl line. So, We'll now be swinging this surface and this surface onto this horizontal plane. That'll be our next um, objective here because we want to open out those surfaces to see the true shape of those surfaces. And from the true shape, we shall get the true angles. Always from a true shape, you'll always get the true angles. So that's our next move here. And by the way, I just popped in a quick note there in relation to a lip bevel, which is further on in this video. But whilst we're here, I just want you to take note that 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 distance from here to here is half the diagonal thickness of the hip rafter, or sorry, yeah, the hip rafter, and that will be very, that's information we will need to know, that's a measurement we will need to know later on when we're doing the lip bevel. But just, we'll, we'll, we'll carry on for now, but we'll come back to that again as we're going into the lip bevel. So for now, we're opening out the um, two shapes of our purline. So the first thing we're going to do is, as said earlier, we're going to swing those surfaces um, up onto the horizontal plane so here we go that's swung up onto the horizontal plane here and now we're projecting it down onto the plan view of the hip and that point then opens from there out to there and you can look at this top corner like a hinge our surfaces are hinging on that corner and there's the in view of the hinge point or pivot point up here shall we say so that's basically what's happening and there's an animation coming up here now to illustrate that uh, as, as as shown right here right now you can see both of them hinged up. They're both hinging up, opening out, and they'll arrive up, it'll eventually come up onto the horizontal plane, and that's when you'll see the true shape. And from that, then, of course, you have your true angles, so our true bevels. So um, there you have it, your uh, purlin side cut, or purlin side bevel, uh, purlin edge cut, edge bevel, yeah. There they are illustrated. So you have them developed there straight away. So um, now that we have a, an understanding of what's involved in the development of those angles, um, let's let's have a look at how we can quickly um, obtain those maybe on the corner of a sh sheet of plywood or an offcut of a sheet of plywood that we know has a 90 degree corners on it. So, so basically, we'll use the edge of the sheet here as a um, as our horizontal plane. And so we'll be drawing the purl line up against that edge or horizontal plane. And here's our uh, plan line of our hip in from the corner of the sheet right here. And 
on this top edge of the sheet, we'll just draw our plum, our seed cut and our plum cut. And of course, they both should be 90 degrees to each other. And I've drawn in a purl line here then. So basically, that's how you'll start out. Uh, you'll draw your purl line inclined at the correct angle relative to whatever roof it is you're, that you're setting out. So, uh, so there's your rafter pitch line there. Um, so moving forward, uh, like like we did previously, now we're going to div project the top three line points here. This point, this point, and this point. And that gives us the plan view before development of the two surfaces. So that's the plan view. And there's the joint at the end um, where it meets halfway under the hip. And uh, again, we have to open out those surfaces. So this is now our horizontal plane here, the edge of the sheet. So we'll be opening up this surface and this surface as we've previously done now in the video. But this time we're doing it on a sheet of plywood. So you can there see there, we can just swing the distance, project them down. can measure in off the edge of the sheet if you want to make sure these lines are parallel. And uh, Again, we're opening up our point to come to here. And uh, on the same over here for the edge surface. And uh, those will be opened out. And on your sheet of ply, which you've now um, developed the two angles, the purlin edge cut and purlin side cut for your purlin. And it's just, it's not many lines when you look at it. It doesn't, once you know what you're doing, it doesn't take long to do it. You know, so, um, so yes, now we've discovered the uh, side and edge cuts, we must find the lip bevel, which I've mentioned earlier on in this video. And uh, by the way, you can recreate the scenario that we're about to go into here on the ground, actually. If you, if you lay your hip flat side on, on your bench that you're cutting the rafters and just put two off cuts of a jack and a purl line placed in the correct position up against the side of the hip, then you can do what we're going to do here. Uh, but here we're doing it, where, well, we're going up on the roof as it were. So um, here's your here's your rafter sliding into position. Uh, get it get a straight thin edge. Make sure it makes full contact with the underbelly of our hip here. And when you do, then draw a line here, uh, keeping the edge flat on the on on the side of our purl line. Um, so you'll see that animated here now. Uh, yeah, there's our line drawn there now. That's that's that is our lip bevel. Um, so that lip bevel at the moment now will have to be offset in because we have to allow for the thickness of our hip rafter. So to allow for the hip rafter, the half diagonal thickness that I mentioned earlier is now coming into play here. And uh, so we'll have to offset that back in along the purl line. Uh, there's a, another illustration of where you can get the diagonal thickness of the hip. That's that distance there. And we're using half that then along here. So you can see our lip bevel moved in that distance, half the diagonal of the thickness of the hip, in other words. So that's important. So then you mark parallel into the side cut that you cut earlier. That green line is parallel to the side cut. And you come along the top edge the same way, parallel, and down the back. So you have a notch created, basically, that you're going to have to cut out. But this, this yellow angle line will be the bottom of the notch, by the way. And you can see there we've drawn in, we've drawn in the, the waist to indicate what's getting cut off in white X's. So that's what gets cut off. And uh, once you have those marked, of course, uh, we're going to uh, just cut that notch out. So we're taking it away to cut it as it were. And uh, after it's cut, it'll be sliding back in here again, keeping contact with the underside of the commons and the jacks, and then making contact there with the hip as it just has there now. So, um, yeah, now that we've got a deeper understanding of the purlin bevels, uh, you can quickly do a lot of setting out on something the size of a drawing board as well if you if you want to you know so um, here's an example uh, that we can quickly go through here's your typical drawing board shall we say uh, that you might have in secondary school if you're doing tech drawing or whatever you know so something close to that size so basically what's happened here we've from the corner of that sheet we've drawn the pitch line of your roof which is the seat cushion in other words and uh, we're going to make good use of that line now and um, so um yeah so basically just to complete the right angle triangle to represent the scale down version of the roof we're doing i've just measured in 12 inches from here to here and um, from that then we've created the right this this represents the scale down version of the rise and this is the scale down version of the rafter line on this on this scale down version of that roof the shade in green so uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to swing that rafter line down onto this edge 
using this as uh, this point stays where it is so it's going to hinge from here or pivot from here in other words so you can see that happened here now so um, there it is and that's the line brought down here now and we will put our rise line this rise line here will now be brought over here as animated here now so there's my frame and square or steel roof and square coming in there and from the top of that rise line then down to here that will give us um, uh, the purl and side cut from here to here is your purl and side cut or side bevel so um, so again we'll be using the rafter line again for the second purl and bevel um, which is the purl and edge edge bevel or edge cut so we're going to swing that rafter line onto the other edge of the plywood as indicated here so it'll pivot on this line on there's the inline back down to the where the run and the rise meet down here and there's your purl and edge cut so as you can see once you have an understanding in it doesn't take long to uh, get the two angles if you know what you're setting out you know uh, to get the lip, purl and lip uh, cut or lip bevel basically just come along here again two scaled down versions of the roof uh, just pick two runs 12 and 12 inches if you like uh, put whatever pitch roof you're doing and just draw a vertical line and that'll represent the rise for that scaled down version of the roof which i'll now shade in here yeah let's shade it in so from this point then to the corner of the sheet here we'll draw draw a, a line and um, after that then from this point we will drop a perpendicular line square on to this rafter line and that'll be animated here now yeah and we extend that line that's coming square onto the rafter line to cut that first line the long line we drew here earlier and we're going to swing that this distance from here to here we'll swing that up onto the rise line here and we'll arrive at about here somewhere and then from there down to here we draw a line and in this case it'll be a white line here and the angle between that white line and the bottom edge of our set note board is our lip bevel so that's another way to get the lip bevel here just before we move on before we wrap it up i uh, just want to talk about how you can get the lens of pearl lines so here's your plan view of a hip roof and you would peel away the hip the roof itself surface just to have a look at the layout and there's our hip lines and here's our pearl line halfway up the roof or halfway up the hip and I just want to make a few little points here before we close. This is from outside the wall plate to outside the wall plate, roof length we'll call it. From here to here is the uh, end of the roof. Uh, it's, 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 it's the width of the roof. So the point I want to make here is that we can quickly calculate the lengths from here to here for the lengths of our power lines and from here to here. So we'll just go into that here now so there's our wall plate coming in there in orange uh, and you can quickly come up with a form if you really think about it this this um this right angle triangle here we know that that distance from here to here is half the span and because it's a 45 degree right angle triangle we also know that this is also then half the span and uh, but if we scale that right angle triangle down by half then it means that this distance goes from being half the span to being a quarter of a span and if it's a quarter of a span this way it'll be a quarter of a span this way so I guess what I'm really coming to is if you have a quarter span left to go here and a quarter span left to go over here, then the two quarter spans equals half a span. So the formula we're going to evolve to really is that we take the roof length, outside the wall plate, to outside the wall plate, roof length, yeah, minus the half span of the roof, which is from here to here. We're left with this length from here to here. That is our parallel length along the side of the hip roof. For the end of the hip roof, it'll just merely be um if you really think about it this is a quarter of a span this is a quarter of a span and what's left in here is actually half a span so for the purlin at the end of the roof it'll always if you want to be halfway up the roof it'll be half the span i've just popped in the formulas there so uh, there's the formulas just arrived there animated so hopefully that's of use to you and give you a, a good understanding of what's involved in marking out purlin bevels and obtaining purlin lints okay all the best Right.